Hello guys, let's begin this session. So guys, in this session, we are going to talk about classification. Okay, so what is classification? So in classification, we classify the given input into the predefined labels. Okay. For example, if we have any email data and we want to classify that data either as a spam or ham. Okay, so there are two classes, spam or ham. So this is a classification problem. Another example, uh, suppose if we want to uh, classify a patient on the basis of some given feature, whether he has cancer or not. Right? So this is also a classification problem. So in the case of classification, there might be two classes or more than two classes. So if we have two classes, so that will be a binary classification problem and if we have more than two classes so that will be a multi-class classification so the first algorithm that we are going to implement that is logistic regression so logistic regression is a classification algorithm it is one of the most popular machine learning algorithm which comes under supervised learning technique supervised learning technique means uh, where we will have input data and output data Right. So there are two major types of machine learning, right, which are supervised and unsupervised. So in the case of supervised, we have input data and output data. And in the case of unsupervised, we have only input data. So it is used for predicting the categorical dependent variable using a given set of independent variables. So in the case of classification, there will be a target column. And in the target column, we will have categorical values. In the case of regression, we have seen there was continuous value in the target column. But in the case of classification, in the target column, we will have category. Right? We will have some predefined category. Right? And that may be yes or no, true or false. Right? It is commonly used for binary classification problem. But we can also use this algorithm for multi-class classification. So this algorithm we mostly use for binary classification problem. But we can also apply this for multi-class classification. Binary classification means we have two classes or two labels in the target column. And multi-class multi classification means we have more than two classes in our classification problem. So here you can see this image. So in the image you can see we have some inputs x1, x2, x3. And we have constant here we have constant value one right and also we have corresponding weights or coefficient w1 w2 w3 so here in the sigmoid function so at the back end this algorithm use sigmoid function right to do the classification so if uh, if we do binary classification problem in the output either we will get one or zero right either we will get one or zero so this algorithm predicts the probability of a given input as output. So using sigmoid function, basically uh, we predict the output as a probability, right? And after that, uh, with the help of some threshold value, we convert that probability into a predefined label. For example, if we get a probability which is greater than 0.50, so in that case, the class will be one, right? So there is a rule in the case of sigmoid function. And that rule is uh, if the sigmoid output is greater than or equal to 0.5, then class will be one. Otherwise, class will be zero, right? So this is a rule in the case of sigmoid function. Okay, now let's talk about what is sigmoid function. So in order to map predicted values to probabilities, we use the sigmoid function. The function maps predicted values into another value between 0 and 1. So in the case of logistic regression, we convert the y values or we can say uh, weighted some values into a form of probability, into a form of probabilities with the help of sigmoid function. Right? And as you know, uh, probability always lie between 0 and 1. So if the sigmoid output is more than 0 0.5 or equal to 0 0.5 the class will be one or we can say positive class otherwise the class will be zero or we can say negative class and this is a formula here 
p equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus y. So here y is the weighted sum, you can say. Means here we can use that equation that we have covered in linear regression y equal to mx plus p. So that y we can use here. So at the back end, logistic regression, use sigmoid function for binary classification. Next, we have loss function. So in the case of uh, linear regression, we have seen the loss function was mean squared error or mean absolute error. But here in the case of logistic regression, the loss function is log loss. Right? We can call a loss function as a log loss to calculate the error. And log loss also called as a binary cross entropy loss. A loss function that represents how much the predicted probabilities deviate from the true ones. So if you want to calculate the performance of a classification model, or we can say a performance of a, a logistic regression model, right, we can use a log loss function. And this is a formula here, log loss equal to summation xy belongs to data set D minus y. Here y is the actual label and log y dash. Y dash is the predicted output. You can see here y dash is the predicted output somewhere between 0 and 1. Then 1 minus y, again y is the actual label, log of 1 minus y dash. Y dash is the predicted value or we can say sigma, uh, sigma output. So this loss function we use. So if we use a linear learner for classification, we have to set the loss function and the loss function either we can pass a log loss or we can use binary cross entropy loss right next we have multi class classification how we can do multi class classification using logistic regression so basically at the back end we use softmax function softmax function is a function that turns a vector of k real values into a vector of k probabilities that sum to one it means uh, suppose if we have three classes, so after using softmax, we will get three probabilities, right? We will get three probabilities. Here in this image, you can see, suppose if we have three classes, so first we have to calculate three y's, means y1 for the, for, let's say for the class zero, y2, let's say for the class one, y3, let's say for the class two. Now here we have uh, three y's. Now these three y's you can convert into the form of probabilities. So we can use a softmax function and this is a formula of softmax function. So after using softmax function, let's say we have probability equal to 0 0.7, 70% probability for the class zero. And then 20% probability for the class one, 10% probability for the class two. After that, we can pick the class that has highest probability here. So the highest probability, let's say we have 0.7, 70% probability. So the final output will be here class zero, right? Our predicted label will be here class zero because class zero has highest probability here, right? So softener function finds the probability for each class and the class that has highest probability can pick as the predicted label or output. What is hyperparameter? So hyperparameters uh, are defined as the parameters that are explicitly defined by the user to control the learning process. It means uh, before training a model, we have to set the values of the parameters, right? Of the parameters that we can call as a hyperparameter. So the process of selecting the best hyperparameter to use is known as hyperparameter tuning. And that we will also cover into the session tactically, right? I'll show you how to implement hyperparameter tuning the tuning process is also known as hyperparameter optimization. So uh, whenever we use uh, algorithm with the default values of the hyperparameter, right? So uh, always uh, we will not get good accuracy. So sometimes we have to set the best value of the hyperparameters and the best value we can find with the help of hyperparameter tuning. So choosing the right value for hyperparameters means maximize the model performance, minimize a predefined loss function to produce better result with fewer errors. So the main idea behind implementing hyperparameter tuning is to find the best value of a hyperparameter. Okay, so first we will implement logistic regression using scikit-learn. 
then we will implement hyperparameter tuning also with the cycle done and then we will implement classification binary classification or multi class classification using linear learner sage maker linear learner algorithm okay so i'll show you first the basically how we can implement uh, logistic regression using scikit learn so first we need some data so here uh, we will download the data from uh, from the sklearn library first from sklearn dot data set so in this library we have some inbuilt data sets so i'm going to use here let's say load load is data set this is a very popular data set in the entire machine learning in this data set we have three classes or three categories right and this data set is about flowers data set in this data set we have four features okay i'll show you uh, how this looks like. So basically, in this data set, we have uh, three classes. I'll show you what are these. Uh, Iris data set. You can see. So basically, this data set is about flowers data set. In this data set, we have three classes Versicola, Citosa, and Vachinica. We have four features here sample length, sample width, petal length, and petal width. And also we will get a target column. So in the target column, we will get the predefined categories. So if we have a value for sample length, sample width, pattern line, and pattern width, so we have to predict the class. Okay. Next, uh, in this data set, we have one the samples. We have four features. We have three classes. So in cycle done, we already have this data. Next, we can import from sklearn dot data set import logistic regression oh sorry uh not data set uh we can import linear model import logistic regression next uh, we will import train test split from sklearn dot model selection import train test split then in the case of classification we use accuracy score and we use accuracy score to evaluate the model performance. In the case of uh, regression, we have seen R2 score, but here we will use accuracy score from sklearn dot matrices import accuracy score. Okay, so iris equal to load load iris. So if you want to get data as the data frame we can pass as frame equal to true right here uh, in the uh, in this variable iris we will get a uh, we will get a data frame right and inside that data frame we will have input data and output data if you want to get output as an array so we can just run this line right there is uh, no need to pass any argument in this function load errors okay let's pass here as frame equal to true so if we display here as frame equal to true okay i'll start uh let me check we are getting here output of the dictionary oh as frame equal to false it an xy equal to true if two then data is a panda set of frame including columns with appropriate data types target is this series depend on target column Okay, here uh, we have to also pass xy return xy equal to true. xy equal to true. Uh, return xy equal to true. I start. Let me check. Okay, uh, here we are getting this. So if we pass it an x y equal to true, so here we will get input data and output data into a single variable. You can see we are getting output as a tuple. So at index zero, we have data. And uh, here you can see at index one, we have output data. Another way uh, we have, we can import here pandas as pd. And uh, okay, let's see what will happen if you use as frame equal to true. And uh, pd dot data frame, if you pass, or if you, 
Okay, or uh, if we pass only a load iris, and if we pass here is dot data, you can see now we are getting output as a data frame. So if you want to display the data in a tablet form, you can use PD dot data frame. Okay, so in X we can store all the features iris dot data. So in iris dot data here we will get all the features, and in the Y we want to store target column. I start target. If you want to see the number of samples, we can use attribute shape. So in this data, we have 150 samples for features. And you can also check the values in Y. So we have a corresponding 150 values. Right? We have 150 corresponding outputs. Okay, after that, we want to split the data. So train test is split. You can pass x comma y test size equal to 0.2 percent and the output we want to store into four parables so first we will get train input then test input and then train output and then test output okay if you want to check the shape for a strain the shape is 120,4 okay next uh, we want to use here model logistic regression so LG equal to logistic regression model. So if you want to see the detailed documentation about this algorithm, you can just press shift and tap. You can see here some, so these are the hyperparameters. Right? These are the hyperparameters. So in this uh, data, we have a uh, number of classes, three, right? We have three classes. It means it will be a, multi-class classification problem right it is a multi-class classification problem so if we have more than two classes we can pass multi-class equal to multinomial multi-normal uh, multinomial we have to pass as a string okay and then log dot fit in the fit method we can pass x string comma white chain we're getting some error let's see what error we are getting here a string object uh, has no attribute to code okay uh, random states solver so uh, multi-class equal to let's me copy this if you don't pass any value right so it will pick the value randomly because here you can see default equal to auto okay the default value is auto so okay let's pass multinomial okay let me also check uh, our x train and y train x train so we have all numeric features here and then let me check y train also here we have numeric categories so why we are getting this error the string object uh, no attribute to code okay a uh, multi-class classification x train y train and x test y train y test okay uh, if you don't pass any value let's say if you run this okay let me check why we are getting this error so just copy this and let's search about this error maybe uh if uh, if there is any new version of scikit-learn so there may be some change i try to upgrade my this uh, command so Okay, we can use liblinear or uh, in the most is recent version of scikit-learn 0.24.1 problem has fixed and closing a part. Okay, there's a bug with solver LBFGS changing to sec. Okay, and this is uh, basically a optimization algorithm. And this is basically optimization algorithm. So we have to select the optimization algorithm that support multi-class equal to multinomial okay that support multi-class equal to multinomial so let's say if we pass multi-class equal to multinomial multinomial and here we can change also solver solver uh in this uh installer basically we pass optimization algorithm so let's try with saga again see here now we are here, uh, we are not getting any error. We are just getting a warning. And the warning is 
max hydration leads which means coefficient did converge it means we have to increase the number of hydration okay or let's try with some other hyper uh, some other optimization algorithm still we are getting this so we can do one thing uh, we can increase the max hydration means number of passes or we can say this uh, this hyperparameter is equal to the number of epochs so number of uh, max hydration is pass here of 500 let's try with 500 still we are getting this so let's increase this value now you can see we are not getting any warning or any error so this problem is basically we have in this version right so if we get such error we can just pass solver equal to sag or saga right means we have to just change the optimization algorithm name and the default one is lbfgs so the main purpose behind using optimization algorithm is to minimize the loss by finding the best value of the hyperparameter. Okay, so after fitting a model, next uh, we want to make prediction log dot predict. Okay, uh, before this, let's take a sample for the testing. Test equal, uh, we have x test data at index zero. We want to test, uh, means uh, we want to make prediction on this sample. Okay, so uh yeah. before making prediction we want to get the probabilities right we want to get the probabilities so let's see how many probabilities we will get if we make prediction on this sample so log dot predict proba here we have a method that is predict proba we pass the sample so we have to pass the sample as a two dimension so we can pass the sample in a list you can see we are getting three probabilities means because we have three classes so this is a probability for class zero for class one for class two and the highest probability is 0 0.61 right this is the highest probability right so as i said before that in the case of soft max or we can see in the case of multi-class classification uh we can pick the class that has highest probability so the highest probability we have for the class two it means uh, the predicted label predicted label will be here class two right how we can find the predicted label and just log dot predict this method we can use to find the predicted label and we can pass the same sample here you can see we are getting class two so class two we are getting because of highest probability right okay let's find the predicted label corresponding to all the samples in the x test so prid equal to log dot predict and we can pass here x test because we want to get the predicted labels corresponding to each sample that we have in x test so prid you can see here we are getting predicted labels now we want to evaluate the model model performance right we want to just uh, check uh, like uh, 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 how many correctly classified samples we have right how many correctly classified samples we have or uh, suppose if we want to check how many misclassified samples we have so first we want to know the accuracy score here accuracy score basically return a single number summary right it returns a single number summary of a model so we can uh, here we can first we can pass actual output so actual output we have in y test and the predicted output we have in PID. So you can see the model performance or the accuracy score is near about 0.93 if we get 100 percent accuracy it means all the samples are, uh, all the samples are classified correctly but here we have got some misclassified samples also, right? If we want to get uh, how many misclassified samples we have got here. So uh, we need here NumPy. So uh, let me first import, import NumPy as NP, and then NP dot, we can use here NP dot where, and we can pass Y test not equal to, 
So here we have got two misclassified samples and these are the index numbers, right? We have first misclassified sample at index zero, then we have second misclassified sample at index 29, right? So we have got two misclassified samples. So accuracy score basically is a evaluation technique in the case of classification. So 0.93 means 93% uh, samples are correctly classified by this model, right? 93% samples are correctly classified by this model, right? So this is the meaning of this number. So this is how we can implement logistic regression. If we have only two classes, right? So there is uh, no need to pass anything, right? Or maybe uh, we have to just change the solver in the case of binary classification. But in the case of multi-class classification, we can pass multi-class equal to multinomial, solver equal to saga, or if we get any warning, right, then we can just increase the max iteration. Okay. Next, uh, how we can implement this? How we can do a uh, classification using linear learner? Okay. So let me open this file, set the kernel, restart and output. So here we are going to use the same data, iris data set. So in the case of SageMaker, if you if you are going to train a model, you if you are going to train a model using a SageMaker linear learner, so we have to set the first column as a target column, right? In the CSV file, then load iris SageMaker to true input and output head. You see, we have four features: target column. Okay, now here uh, we need a data frame where we have first column as a target column. So pd.concate you can use and the first column will be a target, right? And rest of the columns will be have as a features. X is equal to one means we want to perform here concatenation column wise. So this is our data. You can see the first column is target and the rest of the columns we have as a features. And the shape of the data, we have 150 samples. We have five columns, four features and one, and one target column. Next, we can split the data into train and test. Next, we want to save our data into the CSV file that we have also covered in the last session. Okay, next, we want to store the data into the S3 bucket. So the bucket name is Iris class demo. Or if you want to take some other, some other name, you can pass some other name also. So I'm going to pass, uh, I'm going to create a bucket with the same name, Iris CLS demo. Okay, so how we can create a bucket here? So in bucket, uh, basically we can store the file. So this is a AWS service, simple storage service. So in this uh, S3 bucket, either we can store our train or test data, right? Or we can uh, store our train model also. So this bucket, let me just delete it. Okay, this bucket is not empty. Uh, delete this. Okay. Permanent delete, just copy. And paste it here. Okay, and uh, now uh, we can delete this empty bucket. Okay, now let's create a new bucket that is iris CLS demo. And the reason will be same here US is one okay. and a block for all public access. I think uh, we have to, okay. Mm. Okay, now let's click on this create bucket. So this is a bucket. We have this created iris CLS demo. And let's create a subfolder that is my data. And uh, another subfolder to save our trained model, saved model. So this is the bucket name iris CLS demo. So iris CLS demo. Then, uh, okay, then uh, we have, we can create SageMaker session object. This is the bucket name, and this is the upload data method. We can pass the file, file name that we want to upload into a bucket, then this bucket name, and then keep a fix means subfolder name. We are getting no error. So it means our file, CSV file has uploaded successfully into this bucket. ISL is demo inside this subfolder, my data. Similarly, we can upload another file testdata.csv in the same bucket in the my data folder. Next, here we can retrieve a linear learner algorithm. 
So here we have to pass a region name and the algorithm name that we want to retrieve. So saved model prefix means support the name that we have just created inside the bucket. And this is the output location for our obtained model. Okay, next we can initialize the model. So sagemaker.estimator.estimator container means our uh, model image, role, train instance count, train instance type, ml.m4.xlarge, output location path, sagemaker session. Next we can here mention the input data. So input data here we want to get from the S3 bucket and the content type is text csv and same for the validation data next we want to set some highway parameters so in the case of so uh, in this iris data set we have three classes right uh, so this is a multi-class classification problem so the predicted type will be here multi-class classifier if we have two classes we can pass here binary classifier right i'll show you what options we can pass here okay uh, we cannot access the options here okay let me check here in the stage maker linear learner highway parameters. So here you can see predictor type, binary classifier for binary classification, multi-class classifier for multi-class classification. Okay, uh, let me check others hyper parameters like loss function. Okay, so predictor type and uh, target is epox, why is network models? Uh, here you can see loss function. So we can use logistic. Okay. Log, uh, logistic means uh, log loss, right? Or the loss function for the binary class uh, for the binary classification problem. Squared loss, as we know that uh, this is a loss function for regression problem. Absolute loss, this is also for regression problem. And hinge loss, basically we use for classification problem. Okay, and uh, here you can see soft max loss. So softmax loss basically we use for multi-class classification problem. And if we don't pass any value, it will take default value that is auto here. And that is auto. So the softmax loss, so this is a loss function that we use for multi-class classification. So here we can pass loss function, softmax loss, number of classes. Here we have to mention the number of classes also. Okay. So in the case of multi-class classification, we have to also mention here number of classes. Next, uh, we can train our model. We can call fit method. The fit method we can pass training data channel and validation data channel. So if we have any binary classification problem, so we have to just change here predictor type equal to binary classifier. This will be same. This will be same. This will be same. And loss function we have to pass uh, logistic. Right here, we can pass loss function equal to logistic, right? And there's no need to pass number of classes. Okay, I'll show you uh, in this. So number of classes, uh, okay, here you can see number of classes so when required, predictor type is, okay, I know otherwise. Okay, here you can see multi-class classifier, right? When predictor type is multi-class classifier, then we can pass number of classes equal to three or whatever number of classes we have. Otherwise, we can ignore this option. Okay, so what are the binary classification problems in the real world? So here we can check for Kaggle, cancer data set or cancer prediction. So in this data set, you will find two classes. This is a binary classification data set. And uh, you can solve this problem using a linear learner you will get here data data and description right and this is the file here and uh, you can also search for another options okay uh, cancer data set okay so this is a file here right you can you can see this file and this file you can download and then you can do practice on this data using linear learner algorithm Another example is uh, Kaggle. Uh, you can take a COVID-19 data set, right? So here you have to classify whether a patient has COVID or not, right? So in this data also, you will get two classes. So this is also by classification for now. Another example is a Titanic data set. So in this data set, we have to predict whether a passenger 
it survived or not right so in this data set also here you will get two classes so this is also a binary classification problem so you can just download this data right and implement you can implement a linear learner algorithm on this data also so this is a data here train.csv test.csv so there are some more uh, classification problem right but if you want to do some practice right you can do practice on these data sets so training in progress after that uh, you can create an endpoint name then you can deploy a model here you have to pass instance count equal to one instance type okay i think training has completed let me check now it is completed you can see here training second and believable second okay now we can give a name to our endpoint and uh, we can deploy a model now it will take some more time okay after that uh, we can set the serializer for our input data that is csv underscore serializer then we can set the deserializer for our output data that is json underscore deserializer and then uh, we need uh, test data for the testing so test data we can store into the x test and the uh, so here we will get test in test input data and in the y test we can store our test output data then we can make prediction using model predictor dot predict we can pass our test input and we will get the prediction so prediction here we will get in the form of json means in the form of dictionary next we can use here array to convert the json output into a form of array and then we can find the accuracy score so accuracy score is a evaluation technique for a classification model and then the main point is we have to delete the model and also endpoint right otherwise uh, if uh, if you don't delete model and endpoint so we have to uh, might we pay some charges right so once we are done we have to delete both model and endpoint okay so after this uh, next we will uh, in the next session we will talk about knn so knn is an another classification algorithm okay so in the next session we will talk about knn and uh, in the knn we will see the theory of knn and how, and how we can implement knn using scikit-learn and uh, and the sage maker also Right. So there is a separate algorithm in SageMaker right, for KNN. We also have uh, some multi-class classification problem. So here you can search what are the multi-class classification problems like a digit data set. So here we will find this MNIST digit data set. So in this data set, we have uh, 10 classes. right? And this data set is about hand-written digit images. In this data set we have 70,000 samples and 10 classes right so for practicing you can use this data set okay guys so it is enough for today's session right so today we have covered logistic regression which is a classification algorithm okay guys so let's wind up this session and in the next session we will talk about KNN. okay thank you guys